and we're back. Today, we're going to do something totally outside of my wheelhouse, something I've pretty much never done before. And we're going to try and address the floor pans on our old Dodge Dart because the passenger side and the driver side both have some uh, holes in them. I was just going to go ahead and install a new shifter, one of these fancy new, look how fancy this is. This is like rich people stuff. I was going to put in a fancy new Magnum shifter, but it doesn't really make sense to install a new shifter when I'd be attaching it to the floor that has a bunch of holes in it. So it only made sense to go ahead and take this time to go ahead and address the floor pans. Now I picked up at the Mopar Nationals a couple years ago, I picked up a full floor pan for this car. I was thinking ahead, but I've been storing this in the shop for probably two years now. So it's probably time to go ahead and uh, start using it. I've never done floor pans before, so this is going to be pretty interesting. I don't think I'm going to need the full, full floor pan. I think I bought the whole floor pan because it really wasn't much more money to buy the whole thing. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it turns out better than my wheel wells did. And it's not as much fail as the last video, but either way, we'll have a lot of fun. So stay with us and we'll see how this goes. Well, the first thing we're going to do is clean out the interior. I don't think I've ever vacuumed this car since I bought it, to be honest. But I have put these very fancy air purifying filters in here. These are awesome. You should put these. I highly recommend these in every car you own. Um, I don't know if you can see. These eliminate odors. They're like charcoal activated. You can set them out. You leave them in your car. And it like absorbs all the stinky smells and uh, all you have to do to recharge them is set them out in the sun one day and then you come back and your stinky smells are gone and they really do work pretty good. We keep them in pretty much all of our classic cars, our daily drivers, keep them in the motorhome, especially lots of them in the motorhome just because, uh, just because. And then if you live in the Midwest, you probably fight with mice. So you can see we always keep a little bit of Irish spring in most of our old cars too, just to hopefully Keep the mice away. Oh, you can get those bags on Amazon, by the way. They're not expensive. All right, we got the seat bolts out. So I'm gonna see if I can get this thing out by myself. I need mom out here because she could just like lift this thing and throw it by herself. Like wouldn't even be an issue. I'm probably gonna throw out my L7 or something trying to get it out by myself. But anyway, we'll try and get it out here. <laughs> Hopefully, who knows what hidden treasures will be underneath this seat. All right, well, making a little bit of progress. So I got my workout after skipping my workout at the gym this week. You know, hopefully I look a little less chubby today. I noticed in the other videos I looked a little chubby. The girls made me way too many Christmas cookies. And 
You know, I just can't stay out of the Christmas cookies. Like, I have no self-control. But I was kind of sick this week, so maybe that'll help. All right. Well, I don't see any treasures in here, unfortunately. I just see some yucky floor mats. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, nasty rubber mat out of here. It's actually pretty smelly, by the way. You can see the back seat's the only part that, of the interior that's not really mint. Let me put that, that terrible, terrible, terrible patch on there. All right, so let's uh, get all this yuckiness out of here. Could really use the Hulk right now. She's busy tanning and doing lady stuff. She lives the high life. I don't know if these seats were redone or what. They are like in such good shape. Oh, amazing. Let's see if we can get this disgusting and smelly rubber mat out of here. Every time I touch it, I cringe. It's so funny in all these old cars that they have so many of these ashtrays. I think this car has like I don't know, three or four ashtrays. Like apparently everybody in the family smoked. Mom, dad, the kids. Your 12-year-old kids must have smoked back in the 60s, I guess. But they're in really good shape still. We're going to go ahead and try and get this floor mat out. Can't come soon enough because every time I touch it, my hands just smell worse and worse and worse. And it's kind of grossing me out, to be honest. So apparently the reason the floor pans in these cars always rust out is because of the very cool vent windows. Apparently the vent windows, after a few years, didn't really seal up all that well. And a little bit of water would just trickle in through the vent window, down to the floor. And if the car was sitting on an angle, it would come back to this part. And that would lead to the rest of the floor rusting out on these cars. So it's super common. So the vent windows, although they are amazingly cool, apparently they were not as functional, so that's why they kind of went away. Oh, it's touching me! Oh, oh gross. Oh, God. Oh, it smells so bad. Oh. From uh, review, the floor in this car is a little worse than I thought it was. The gentleman said it was a solid car, but so if we're going to have a roll cage put in this car, they're going to weld it. Since this is a unibody car, you're going to end up welding it to that floor. So it needs to be somewhat of something decent to weld it to, and that's not really the case right now. So I'm glad I pulled that out because we are definitely going to have to do a left and right. It looks like the center tunnel is okay. So we will, uh, we'll keep moving forward. That's all we can do. After a quick trip into the house to, uh, wash all that, uh, we got the rubber mats out of the shop and disposed of. And I, Went and got my shop supervisors to cheer me up after the disastrous uh, findings that came about after taking this mat out. This ended up being a little worse than what I thought it was. So, so I brought the shop supervisors out to hopefully cheer me up. Although they're almost as smelly as the car is right now. What are you guys into? Got the seats out, we got the floor mats out, so now we gotta get the 
and the trim. So next is the seatbelt bolts. Oh, good help is so hard to find. <sighs> well, you know, in the intro, how I said we probably wouldn't use the full fuller pan because it wouldn't be that bad. Well, I don't think that was true. I think it's all got to come out. So, I've got my least favorite tools in the world the death wheel and the smaller death wheel. <laughs> and we are going to start cutting for probably what's gonna be an infinity. But we are doing safety first because there's brake lines and fuel lines and maybe transmission lines under there. So hopefully we don't hit any of that. Here we go. I can't think of a single thing that can go wrong here. Taste it. It's not good. Be real happy if I can only use this. I really don't want to have to use the death wheel. I hate using the death wheel. Why do I hate using the death wheel? Because I almost lost my arm once because of it. Literally. Literally, I am not a smart man. I've made mistakes. Just to see how bad this really was. Can you see this? Uh, this I pulled the body plug out and the floor came with it. Sure, that's fine. The biggest fear over here is the fuel line is right here. And although I am replacing the fuel line, I do not want to cut it right now because um, I really don't want to burn my shop down. Kind of a bummer. I do like it. One eternity later. Well, we have all the floors cut out. I don't even know what time it is. I've been cutting forever and grinding and hammering. But the passenger side is all cut out. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got out so far. So you can see I had to cut it all the way back. So there's actually a seam right here that you can just take an air hammer and uh, split that seam. So I did have to bust out the trusty air hammer, which is key to this project, because otherwise there is no way to split the uh, spot welds. So there's really no way to see them because of the rust and uh, all the crud that's in there. There's really no way to tell exactly where the spot weld welds are. So you just kind of got to air hammer away. We can see I had to grind all the way up to the front of the firewall. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, that whole side. So if you take a look at what we cut out, you can see how bad it really was. Uh, let's switch cheese. This is the front floor pan. You can see it was, that's where somebody did a terrible job of patching it before. So yeah, that was that was what we were dealing with. So there was no saving it. It all had to come out to do it right. So anyway, I'm gonna go inside and cry a little bit because this ended up being way worse than I thought it was. I'm pretty sure I got bamboozled on this deal. Stay tuned. 
Welcome back to Wendy Holler Garage. We're back the next day. I've had a couple days off from working on the floor pans in the dart. Uh, took a trip yesterday to my favorite store in town. My favorite stores. Made a quick trip to Rural King, the Target for Men, and uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, went ahead and picked up a few of these spot weld cutters. So we're going to see if these will help uh, knock down all the spot welds. Anyway, that's enough rambling and procrastinating. Well, the good news is the spot weld remover works quite well. The bad news is there's like a thousand spot welds. Not really exaggerating. It's like a thousand. Well, been grinding away and I have a problem. So you'll notice a drip there on the floor and kind of smelled gasoline, which I think we talked about that when I was cutting the floor pan out. I was trying to avoid uh, hitting the uh, fuel line because the fuel line is right here. So, I think the air hammer, air hammering to pull the, I don't think I actually hit it, but I think just the, maybe the vibrations of it may have finally knocked a, knocked a little hole in the, in the rust there. I mean, that fuel line was coming out anyway, because there was no way this car was ever going to run tinned on this dinky little fuel line. I have a new one for it anyway. I was just uh, procrastinating putting that uh, in. Uh, luckily... I do have a fire extinguisher right there, so and it was just a drip. And of course, when you have a nose that's uh, massive like mine, you pretty much pick up any smell like that immediately. So I smelled a little bit of gas, so we figured we better take a break here. And uh, we're going to pull this fuel line out. Probably don't have to pull the gas tank. I can probably just plug it with a bolt back there at the gas tank. And we should be good. But uh, I found that a plethora of tools is required for this. So we've got the air hammer for peeling back your layer. Little belt sanders are helpful for uh, getting into tight places, uh, grinding some of these rivets down that are in bad places. And then I found, of course, the little die grinder is good for taking down some of these, finishing, off, finishing them off a little bit, I guess you could say. Anyway, pull that gas gas line off so I don't uh, so I don't lose the shop, man. We got our fuel line disconnected here, and I went ahead and had to give her a little snip snip right here because you can see it runs down the frame rail right there, and there's about dropping the gas tank and I don't know, taking half the car apart. There's just no way to get this out of here. We got all the fuel lines out. And I think we will take a break from grinding to let all the gasoline fumes uh, evaporate out here for the night. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to go inside let the gas fumes evaporate out of here. Plug the fuel tank. And... Uh, we come back tomorrow for more punishment. All right. Thanks for staying with us. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Well, I decided to come back out so I could sleep better tonight. Uh, the, most of the gas fumes have evaporated or maybe they're just starting to get to me. I don't know. That might be part of it. I, I did take a dinner break, but we still have some. Uh, I can't even talk tonight, so they must have gotten to me a little bit. So, uh, but anyway, we've got this, uh, this is all that's left of the passenger side. So, we've got a few more spot welds left. And then we're going to, we're, we're going to defeat this tonight before I go in for the night. And victory is finally ours. We have removed all of the passenger floor pan. Without burning the shop down, 
Okay. Well, after an infinite amount of grinding and cleaning and grinding and cutting and grinding and cutting, I've got half the floor pan out, which I bought a full floor pan, but I don't think there's any way to do the floor pan in a post car in one fit. Is there's just no way to fit the whole floor pan into the car. So I cut it in half and we're gonna do one half at a time, which I figure that's probably better for me anyway, because I can learn on the passenger side. And then when I get to the driver's side, maybe I'll be a little bit better. And then I can just stitch them back together uh, once I get to that point. So here's what we've got. We got we got uh, one of those Bluetooth floors going on. There's literally nothing. We've got it all cleaned up and ground. I'm getting ready to fire up the welder. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these little spots where I accidentally ground all the way through. And then we're going to lay this panel in. But you can see how bad the floor pan was on the driver's side, too. Like, how bad somebody patched this up. It was just a disaster. Go ahead and try and patch up the little spots here. I'm going to hit, every, hit everything with weld through primer. And then I'll probably be done for the night as I let the weld through primer dry. And then tomorrow, um, you can see I already got the, the pan split in half. I already got the edges all cleaned up on it. So it should be able to, ready to drop in and uh, stitch it back together. I'm not going to split it at these, at the factory welds up here. Um, I don't think there's any point in that on this car because the metal is pretty good it's like perfect up here there's no no rust up here it's this is solid metal so there's no point in me grinding this out so i'm gonna lay it over top of this and then i'm gonna spot load it right down over this and then we'll put some seam sealer over it be back uh probably tomorrow we reached a monumental step this morning we have four pan Final fitted for the passenger side. So if you look, oh, it's really dark up there. Let's see, it's a monumental step. You can see it lays down just about perfect. Fits uh, amazing. Lays down really good all the way along the seam. So. Need to trim just a little bit right there. It doesn't quite be perfect. We're about ready to. Uh, I already got the holes knocked in for the seat belt fastener. I uh, got those all cleaned up. I've got everything hit with weld through primer. Got the some, some the interior parts hit with uh, Rust-Oleum Rust Performer. The parts that I'm not going to be able to get to once I seal this in. So, this should be uh, a big step. Um, first time I've done any, tackled anything to this, uh, to this level. And uh, I've been having a little bit of anxiety. Even just removing the, the floor pan, I was like, is this going to mess up the, the structure? Like, are the doors going to shut? But it did not weaken the structure any. Um, it's kind of why that was another reason I kind of was okay with doing half and half because I was like, if I take the whole floor pan out, is it going to like the car going to start caving in on me? But the doors are still open and shut just fine. The gaps are all just fine. They haven't changed. So um, plus <laughs> these floor pans were so rusted in the back that I don't really think they were adding much structural support to the car anyway. Let's be honest. Let's uh, clearance this last little section right here, and we will move on to a uh, final installation of half, <laughs> half of it, only halfway done. <laughs> so here is everything ready to be uh, put back together. You can see I've got everything covered in weld through primer this morning. Everything turned out pretty good. And then I also went over the spots I'm not going to be able to get to very well with Rust-Oleum where I'm not welding. 
That one through primer is really good stuff. It really is thick. Um, it's expensive though, twenty twenty nine dollars a can. But as you can see, it turned out really well, way better than it did. Passenger side is sitting in place. I haven't welded it yet. I'm still getting to the. I'm about to figure out where I need to do my spot welds. I saw a tip on another site here, so I'm going to try it to figure out where to mark your spot underneath here. Lay it in here and then get it with some primer. That'll tell you. I'll outline where you need to drill your holes or uh, or your spot welds because there's going to be a ton of spot welds coming up here. I'm probably in over my head at this point. I'm really thinking, really second guessing this job at this point. I'm kind of thinking I should have paid somebody to do this. But an average guy replaced floor pans. TBD. TBD, folks. Woo! All right. We have reached a monumental point. We have the floor pan installed. We have it uh, screwed into place here. We've got some screws. You can see how good it fits. It fits uh, really well. So, we... I'm going to go ahead and start welding. See, I got a couple. I got one tack in. Oh, I got two tacks in. I got tack here, too. I got two tacks in, but the rest of them I had to... Uh, needed to pull it up tight before I wanted to... I did put those tacks in just to... So it didn't wiggle on me while I was screwing it down. Uh, but now we are ready to... Uh, finally put this thing where it's going to stay. We are back the next morning. And you can see I got up bright and early, and we got an Oscar the Grouch hiding in the in the floor pan here. Rawr, rawr, rawr. There's uh, you can see the I've already been hard at work this morning. I've got most of the driver's side floor pan already removed, and boy am I glad I got full floor pans because man, it was rusty from the very back all the way through the middle to the very front, basically. I just stuck a pry bar in here and this just popped apart like a like a tin can. So I'm gonna finish uh, I got my cut along the firewall left to do and then we'll cut it down through here and we'll finish getting all the welds out and get this thing out of here. Burnt the crap out of my hand last night. It went I was weld when I was welding the slag. I don't know, the spark went right into my glove and sat right on my hand and I could smell, I smelled like a, a high hibachi girl for a few minutes. I flung the glove across the room. <laughs> Pretty much mint, right? Glamorous, isn't it? Look at all the holes. This thing was like, look at this old patch job. Look at that mint patch job right there. All right. Ah, that is so gratifying. I feel much better now. I feel like I need to go have a beer after two showers. 
the princess finally made an appearance. She's not mad at me this week. Last week she was mad at me. Yeah. This is her contribution. <laughs> well. That was ridiculous. That was just the driver's side. I already flipped up the passenger side, so. Mom's contribution, sweeping up the mess. She was on garage strike last weekend because she was mad at me. It happens. Well, I think we're finally starting to make some progress here. I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Looks like I have some dirt on the end of my nose. That's the problem when you have a big giant nose and it doesn't really fit in your welding helmet. Every time I pull down the welding helmet, it hits my nose. So there's always a smudge in my welding helmet. Big nose problems. But anyway, that's not really probably what you're interested in. Anyway, so we're actually starting to make some progress here. So you can see I have the tunnel stitched back together. And this is not the worst well, it starts a little rough there. This is not the worst weld in the world. I'm not terribly disappointed with how this has turned out. That's, that, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, that's pretty good for a cubicle farm guy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that my talc fab is plenty safe. Uh, but uh, in my spot welds have all turned out pretty good. I've gotten a little bit better with the technique as we've gone. I haven't, I'm showing these ones, I haven't even ground them down yet, so I haven't even cleaned them up yet, so they're definitely coming along a lot better. Uh, I learned a, learned a little bit on the, the drinker side, passenger side over there, so when I got to the driver's side, I had a little bit better technique. And this will definitely be way better than it was, because, you know, I'm actually sitting on the floor and not feeling like I'm going to fall through for once, so... You see I got the passenger side almost buttoned up, the driver's side is in the final stages here, so just a few more welds, and we will be to the promised land, so this has been way more than I thought it was going to be, I haven't recorded everything because it's pretty much all the same, cut, grind, weld, clean, repeat. Alright, back to welding. Making some progress here. We got the new fuel line uh, in place. We had to take down the fuel tank strap. We had to take off the shock. We had to take off the wheel. All kinds of fun stuff here. But the new fuel line, which is a right stuff uh, three eighths line, I believe, should be a lot better than the factory little bitty line. Uh, I got to drill the holes for the seat. Put the seat back in, and uh, then we'll be ready for. At least drivable again. I got my helper back. She only comes back for snacks, which must mean we're getting close to being done. Anyway, notice her interesting haircut. <laughs> oh, so we got the floors are all welded back in. Mom came out and made an appearance. She helped vacuum the car out while I put tools away. We actually got. 13 pounds of dirt cleaned out of the car and now I'm hitting everything with a little bit of Rust-Oleum Rust Performer Get everything with a quick coat of that over it I realize the spot back here still looks kind of Not the greatest, but it is solid and just uh, But I think that'll get improved when we put the roll cage in the car because we're gonna do something so that there's something, obviously we're not going to weld the roll cage to that, so we're going to run something from the frame rails across, and then I think that'll address all of that. So, anyway, we're going to finish painting, 
and then uh, get ready for a seam sealer. So this is about how many wheels, cutting wheels, grinding wheels, things like that we went through. I think I actually did throw a couple of them away, but uh, this is a majority of them. So you can see we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that one's uh, got stuffed on. Nine, ten. And I think I threw at least two away. So I probably had a dozen cutoff wheels, a wire wheel, a couple flap discs, and <laughs> that was a significant amount of grinding wheels. I'm gonna have to make a go to stock, make a run to Hobo Freight and stock back up real soon. Guess what? The floor pans are done. I can't believe it. Now I didn't get the shifter done, so I did fail a little bit. Would you expect anything less? But look at this. We've got the seat back in the car. We've got the floor pans back in the car. And I have my co-pilots ready to go for a cruise. Now it's about 20 degrees outside today, but we're gonna see if this puppy will fire up and we can at least go around the block. We got the old girl pulled out of the garage. We got the, the puppy dogs all loaded up. We got the single plane torquer intake all fired up on an ice cold day and she doesn't care. She wants to go cruise for a little bit. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed my suffering here a little bit and we are gonna go for a little bit of a cruise. Thanks everybody. Well, the floor pans are done on the dart. This was a good exercise to see if an average guy can replace floor pans. The answer is kind of. I think they turned out pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're way better than they were. Uh, we don't have a lot of shouts this episode. We only used parts from the right stuff fuel line and the floor pans were from AMD. What are we working on next? Next up is my 66 Plymouth Belvedere. We call her lovingly Betty White. She needs to get a little bit of TLC and get a few little updates done before racing season since that's definitely getting closer and closer. As racing season approaches, uh, we plan on taking you guys along with us for the, for the ride. Should be quite an experience. Feel free to check us out on Instagram to stay up to date on the shop shenanigans. Our Instagram handle is windy underscore hollow underscore garage. We appreciate you sticking around this long. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Maybe roast him a little bit in the comments for us as well. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.